the strategy today is not dissimilar from the strategy from 15 years ago. And that, that should horrify you because there is nothing in the tech industry that doesn't change wildly from year to year. I think the tech industry has consistently done the bare minimum to address some of the worst online harms. The primary strategy is bury your head in the sand, hope nobody notices the horrible things happening on your platforms, and try to avoid responsibility. And I think the gig is up. Everybody's looking around on the internet being like, this is not an okay strategy anymore. PhotoDNA is a soft hashing algorithm developed by myself and Microsoft in 2008. It was designed with the explicit goal of reducing the global distribution of child sexual abuse material. Organizations like the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and the Canadian Center for Child Protection have identified tens of millions of pieces of child sexual abuse material. Once identified, each piece of content can be hashed, added to the central database, and distributed to all online platforms. Then, when anyone tries to upload or share a piece of previously identified content, it can be flagged, blocked, and reported. We provided this technology at no cost to all participating platforms. This hashing is very efficient, so even a platform with billions of daily uploads can scan every single piece of content. PhotoDNA is also very accurate, with an estimated false positive rate on the order of 1 in 50 billion. Because every flagged image undergoes human review, even these rare false positives have minimal impact on users or the platform. Hashing is used to identify everything from copyright infringing material to terror-related content and child sexual abuse material. Despite rapid advances in AI, today's best performing image and video matching technologies are simply incapable of accurately identifying illegal or violating content. Hashing is a well-understood technology that when deployed properly can be highly effective and accurate at limiting the spread of previously identified harmful content. Unlike today's black box AI systems, a hash database of material to be blocked is created with human moderation and can be audited. This means that there is complete transparency in what is being blocked. The hashing technology can be very effective, but you gotta get a few things right. So first of all, the hash database, the database of known bad content has to aggressively grow because we know that every single day, new content sadly, frustratingly is being created. So the database has to grow. We also know this is an inherently adversarial system. So we need to make sure that the technology is keeping up with the adversary. Here's another one. Um, we are pretty good at finding uh, images of child sexual abuse, but we now know today, unlike 2008, that the dominant medium for child sexual abuse material is video. And yet, despite decades of time and to, to get this right, the industry still does not have a universal industry standard and database for video. Um, we still are not doing enough to detect grooming on platforms where predators are extorting young children. We're still not doing enough to deal with live videos where people are abusing young kids uh, and profiting from those live video streams. There are so many more things we can be doing, but we are simply not prioritizing the technological innovations in that space. Encryption, of course, is necessary to do day-to-day -day business on the internet, particularly around financial um, transactions. Um, but end-to-end -end encryption is a system by which I want to send a message to you. My device encrypts it, sends it over the wire fully encrypted as it makes its way through the servers of WhatsApp or Telegram or Apple for that matter. It cannot be decrypted. Even if Apple wanted to, even if you have a lawful warrant, there's nothing you can do to penetrate that encryption. That message then gets delivered to the intended recipient, at which point it is decrypted. So the problem, of course, with end-to-end -end encryption for combating child sexual abuse and other online harms is that nobody can see the content being shared except the sender and the recipient. So some people contend this is great for privacy. I would contend it's good for privacy, but not great for privacy because the metadata associated with messaging is easily available. I know who you're talking to, when you're talking to them, and how often you're talking to them. And in many cases, the metadata is the whole ballgame. Um, so we shouldn't overly romanticize end-to-end -end encryption. 
But the problem for us is that as that content passes its way through uh, a server, we cannot tap in there and say, is this something that is harmful to you or to children or to society or to democracy? It's fully encrypted. And so the question is, how do you incorporate safety measures within this end-to-end -end encrypted system? There's two basic solutions. One is called client-side hashing, which is very straightforward. You simply take the hashing algorithm and you move it from the server to the device. So just before you send the message, images are analyzed against a central database, and then you can intercept if they are known to be illegal or harmful content. Um, Apple developed this technology, a proof of con it wasn't just a proof of concept. They developed it, they were ready to deploy it, and then they ended up scrapping the program. There is another solution, so-called secure enclaves, by which a, a piece of hardware that is commercially available um, will receive a fully encrypted message um, under audit, uh, capabilities, you can, it can unpack that, decrypt the message, do the hashing, and then if it's a match, it will, it will intercept the message, and if it's not, it will repackage, re-encrypt, and send it on its way. And what's really great about these secure enclaves, it can do one thing and one thing only, and you can audit these devices, you know exactly what they're doing, and so I call this end-to-end-to-end -to -end -to -end encryption. It still gives you lots of privacy, um, but still allows you to combat the global distribution of things like child sexual abuse material. When you receive a message with, for example, a URL link, and the app believes that that link may be malware, it will warn you. How, how does it do it? It's reading your messages. There's a little piece of code on your device that says, ah, oh, this looks suspicious. So they are doing client-side hashing to protect you, not children, but you. And they have no problem with this. Why, by the way? Well, because if you're using WhatsApp and people send you URLs and you keep clicking on them, it's malware, you're going to stop using WhatsApp and you're going to go to another service that is safer. And so these platforms have decided that client-side hashing to protect the user, their business, fine. Client-side hashing to protect children, no, 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 this is an outrage and a fundamental violation of privacy. I'm not buying the story and you shouldn't either. Why is it that YouTube is so good at finding copy protected material? Because it's mandated by law, they have to do it. They don't have to find child sexual abuse material. This is what should make you crazy. This is not a technological limitation. If these platforms came to us and said, this is a really hard problem, we can't solve it, and we would look at the problem and say, yeah, yeah, it's a really hard problem, maybe you can forgive them. It's not. They've solved the problem. They've just solved it for the one domain, and they refuse to use that same core technology to protect kids online. And what does that tell us about our society when for decades we have prioritized protecting the financial interests of the movie and the music industry over protecting our children? The technology exists. We're simply not effectively deploying it. The reality is there is so much more today we could be doing to protect children online, to protect individuals from marginalized communities, to protect societies, protect democracies. The core problem is that those interventions are at odds with the core business model of social media, which is to drive user engagement, deliver ads, and make profit. And so when the incentives are misaligned, drive user engagement, drive uh, uh, outrageous content, drive hate, drive vitriol, drive illegal content, because that's what makes profit, well then safety will take a back seat to all of the profits that are being made by the companies. So what could be done? We could absolutely hire more content moderators. We absolutely could innovate to find, to develop technology to find harmful content. We could create better uh, walls to protect kids from predators online. There are unbelievable number of things that could be done to make the internet safer, but it is at odds with the financial interests of these institutions, and in my opinion, that's why they don't do it.